<laughs> Thank you, Carl. Thanks so much. Thank you, Carl. That's, I really enjoyed, uh, let's see, the slides. Let me see if I can make these slides work. I really enjoyed Andrew's talk. It's an exciting time. Uh, when I first started working in quantum computing over 20 years ago, we had no idea that this would suddenly lead to some real quantum computers. And we're about to see that at this very moment. We're not at this moment very soon. In fact, I'd like to get my students to put the IBM Q through its paces with the uh, quantum algorithm, Simon's algorithm. Um, let me begin by talking about the different models of quantum computing. And there are quite a few out there. There's the quantum Turing machine. This is the first quantum model uh, created by David Deutsch, a famous pioneer in quantum computing, a student of John Wheeler. Um, it was later found that the clock of this Turing machine would unfortunately entangle with the, uh, the data on the machine, and uh, there were different technical problems. So the next uh, model was the circuit gate model, which Andrew just talked about. Um, and this uh, has a lot of interesting properties, but we must be very careful that the uh, size of the gates does not grow uh, faster than polynomial time. And then there is another model, which is very interesting, the measurement-based quantum computation, also known as one-way computation. What one does is create a huge entangled state, and then after that, you, one performs a series of adaptive measurements, each measurement depending on uh, the previous measurements. There is also adiabatic model. This is the model used by the D-Wave. On uh, It's also known as quantum annealing. Uh, essentially, this is based on the adiabatic principle. Uh, you start with a very simple Hamiltonian, and if you change the system very slowly, it stays the quantum system stays in the ground state, and at the same time, you move your Hamiltonian, so at the end, the ground state of the Hamiltonian, when read, contains the information you're computing. And then there is uh, topological quantum computation. I see I have a typo there, where one uses quasi-particles called anions, Majorana uh, fermions, it's a concept of braiding, and so forth. And uh, the key feature here is uh, not much error correction is needed. Uh, there's a natural topological obstruction barrier to the whole system uh, decohering, decay. And finally, there are quantum walks. Uh, we, you can think of a, um, a quantum drunk at a lamppost who takes random steps from the post. And what happens is he takes these steps in superposition, and as time goes on, he's all over the place. And finally, I'd like to mention distributed quantum computing. Quantum computers do not need to be localized. In fact, there's some evidence that's best to have them distributed over a quantum network. Uh, there are many different implementations. I'm only going to just mention a few. There's quantum optics. There is uh, ultra-cold ion traps. In fact, I have a student of mine, uh, Dr. Shehab, who's now working for the company Ion Cube, Ion Q, and uh, they're on their way to building a quantum computer. There are spin-based quantum computers. Uh, there are superconducting devices, like the IBM Q, uh, and uh, there are quantum wires for what we know uh, as Majorana fermions, uh, these are uh, for topological computing. Uh, the race for quantum supremacy, this is a phrase coined by Jim Presco, who's now Professor Emeritus from Caltech. And essentially, this is a race to build a quantum computer that outperforms classical computers. And uh, already, I know IBM has uh, mentioned that they intend to uh, win this race. Uh, there's a a great deal going on here. I'd like to mention something else. This reminds me of Aesop's, Aesop's fable uh, of the tortoise and the hare. It's entirely possible that one of the 
slowest technologies, that is topological quantum computing, may be the winner in this game, and we'll see, because there, are, there is a natural obstruction to uh, decoherence. There's not as much need to have many, many qubits um, dedicated to quantum error correction. So all of this began in a certain sense by the demise of Moore's law, and this is driving a huge amount of change, a disruptive change in, uh, uh, in our society, a major paradigm shift, uh, and one of these major changes is quantum uh, computing and quantum information science. Um, this is going to affect society in a big way. Uh, it's, that's why it's called disruptive technology. But more importantly, from my point of view, it will have a major impact on computer science education. And that's the purpose of my talk today, is to talk about education in quantum computer science. Um, universities now will need to train and produce, excuse me, my marker, uh, what I call renaissance computer scientists. Computer scientists conversant not only in computer science, but also in other fields such as physics and advanced mathematics. In fact, I ask all my students uh, who are going for PhDs in uh, quantum and computer science and quantum algorithms to take courses in physics, quantum field theory, uh, quantum mechanics, and advanced math courses in abstract algebra and Lie groups. Um, uh, um, Milt has also asked me to mention, um, uh, to, to talk about his two grants from NASA. Uh, he, he has received two NASA grants from the NASA Advanced Information S System and Technology uh, Office, one for slightly less than a million dollars uh, that has just now come to a close, another for slight, uh, his most recent one is for slightly more than a million dollars. Uh, the title of that one, he has long titles, an assessed, assessment of hybrid quantum annealing approaches for inferring and assimilating satellite uh, surface flux data into global surface models. And Nilt, I hope that the next grant you receive for two million will have a shorter title. Excuse me. Um, there are many accompl accomplishments under this grant, and I, I'd like to mention a lot of our students and uh, quantum computing are supported by it. Uh, I'll just mention a few of these. Uh, basically, they've developed the first feedforward neural net code on the D-Wave for performing regression approximation of multivariate, multi-year, nonlinear turbulent flux observations. Wow, that's very nice. And uh, he's implemented and calculated one year of CO2 flux for the FFBP on classical and quantum computers. Uh, in the second grant, he's developed a multi-qubit uh, error correction methodology for improving global minimum of D-wave of objective function. And he's implemented a non-negative binary matrix factorization on the D-wave that's outperformed the classical one. So this is, there's some amazing results here. Now I'd like to go back to a brief history of quantum computing in CSE department. Over 20 years ago, uh, we started quantum computing uh, by introducing the first graduate course uh, in, in that field, CMSC 643. This program has continued to grow and it's been enhanced by uh, Dar a DARPA Quist grant on quantum algorithms um, by support from the Army Research Labs on the quantum internet and also by the uh, previous NASA grant that I spoke about. Some of the current research uh, in quantum computing at UMBC, some of our projects, we have a number of uh, people working in topological quantum computation, quantum knots, Majorana fermions, uh, creation and correspondence between quantum automata and quantum entanglement. I have a student who's working on that. He's getting some very interesting results. 
quantum logic. We're trying to uh, redefine quantum object, uh, logic in a form that's usable in quantum computing. Uh, quantum protocols based on homotopy type theory. I have a student working on that. Uh, new quantum algorithms. We're always looking for new quantum algorithms. Uh, distributed quantum computing. Um, there's a great deal of work that needs to be done there. It's related to what is, uh, the Army is doing at this time. Uh, and also, just recently, I have a student who's uh, advising uh, a novel quantum algorithm for factorization of integers based on uh, the Buberker grobner basis algorithm. Now, I'd like to mention some of our past um, uh, PhD students. Uh, Roberta Sabin um, is now retired chair from Loyola. Her, the topic of her dissertation was on non-error correcting codes. There is uh, Dr. Anosha Emi Sirotana. He wrote his dissertation on distributed quantum computation. And today that is very relevant uh, for the uh, uh, Army's research on the quantum internet. In fact, it's very useful in that regard. Uh, Dr. David Cornwell, who works for uh, Booz Allen Hamilton, he wrote his uh, thesis on quantum hidden subgroup algorithms. And uh, Dr. Omar Shihab, who now works for INQ, and the topic of his dissertation was topological quantum computing, and it's also quantum adiabatic computing. And he also told me uh, to be sure to, to mention to the audience today that INQ uh, intends to win the race for quantum supremacy. <laughs> okay. Current PhD students, uh, this is Ajenka Borle. And uh, Jenka is working on quantum Bayesian networks and quantum algorithms for numerical computation. And this is uh, Mark Laxon. He's working on, he's found an interesting uh, relationship between quanta, quantum automata and quantum entanglement. He's also working on quantum pro protocols based on uh, homotopy type theory. Uh, this is uh, this year's class of quantum, uh, new quantum computer scientists. Uh, when I look at this slide, I see that they're too happy. I need to, to give them more work. <laughs> this is our quantum nothing seminar. This is some of the people involved in this. This is a venue for violent debates on quantum computation and quantum information sciences. We frequently take papers in the open literature and tear them apart. Uh, we have lots of fun. Uh, this is a master student, Joseph O'Malley. He's working on quantum games. He has a project there. Uh, here we have uh, uh, Matthew Kasoulis, and he's working on topological quantum computation. And we have a newcomer here, uh, Anthony Agu, who just uh, joined us two weeks ago. We'll put him to work right away. I'm, I'm sure that uh, uh, he has a lot to say. We also have a very uh, important participant in our uh, seminar is Dr. John Dorban. Uh, and we frequently challenge him on quantum adiabatic computing. We have lots of debates. And that's essentially it. Uh, there's a lot more I could say, but I think it's now time to stop. Thank you very much.